Hello, um, just wanted to do a quick video on a diode clamp today. Um, so we have a circuit that looks something like this. I've uh, got a resistor and a resistor forming a potential divider. Uh, this is VCC. Uh, let's call this ground for now. Uh, yeah, definitely ground. Ground is good. Um, let's call this R1. Let's call this R2. And then we have a central point here. Let's call this VX. Um, uh, we need the rest of the circuit now. Uh, let's put a diode on here. Um, which way should we make the diode face? This is a good way of drawing a diode. Make it like a capacitor, and then you can choose which way around to put the point in the middle. Um, uh, if we put it pointing that way, uh, then it will conduct when this voltage. Yeah, let's let's put it pointing that way. There we go. We've got a diode. Um, so. Uh, when the voltage on this side of the diode is higher than this side of the diode, this is a very, very simple diode model. So we're going to use a very simple diode model. It looks like this. Um, so we have um, uh, voltage on this axis, current on this axis. Um, uh, um, a bit difficult to draw with the same color pen and like no dashed lines. But um, so this is. Let's continue this this way. This is the zero intercept in the middle, um, so our um, our model is going to have uh, zero volts across it whenever whenever there is any current. Um, so if if it was just a if it was just a device on its own, not limited by any resistors or anything, we're putting the voltage on it. Immediately the current will go will, will be infinite. Um, so we'll be moving along along this line here. Um, um, and when when the voltage is negative, there will be no current, right? Because it's blocking. It's open circuit. Um, so we'll be moving along this line here. Um, so I've just made these lines a bit extra bold. Um, but that's the model of the diode. Does nothing, 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 nothing. Straight short circuit. Infinite current. Um, very, very simple. Eh, more or less applicable. Um, yeah, let's add a bit more to this anyway. We've got to do some some... Uh, current limiting, maybe. Uh, we don't have an input, we don't have an output. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's put something on here. So here is a resistor. Um, yeah, there's a resistor. Let's call that one R3. Uh, let's call this V in. And let's call this V out. V O U T this time rather than V O. Um, so we've got this simple model of a diode. We have this fairly simple circuit. Um, so this is like a this is a clamp. This is a voltage clamp, a voltage limiter. We're using resistors and diodes. Quite simple. We'll never get it as perfect as this in real life. A much better way, much uh, better version would be um, zero volts, and then going across at an angle like this, and we'd have we'd have our axis like this. So that will be zero there. Um, so it would do nothing for a bit, it would get to, so this is voltage on this axis again, so this will be about 0 0.7, and then it would move up like fairly linearly, and that would be, that would represent a resistance, um, RD. Um, but that's a more complicated model, this one's a lot easier to, a lot easier to uh, analyse. Because we can do it piecewise, we can do it for the bit along this line, we can do it for the, the, the bit along this line, where it's an open circuit and where it's a short circuit. Um, yeah, so V out is coming from there, V in is coming from there, VCC is is the voltage up there, we've got this VX here. Um, so let's start off by, by imagining we're walking along this line. Let's start off by imagining we're walking along this line and we're doing so in this direction. Um, so we start off at a negative voltage, so this voltage is much lower here. And this is for this diode, a negative voltage across this diode, right? Um, which means that this side must be a lot less than this side. Um, so VX will be somewhere between VCC and ground, right? Because that's just a potential divider, and this isn't conducting. So this is just a potential divider, and this is just just an open circuit because we're we're still in this region here. Um, so let's make a, an equation for VX while whilst uh, whilst we're in this region here. Um, 
you'll see why in a minute. So vx, uh, let's call this a special variable, let's call this vx1 because this is the, the first case where we're looking at where we're walking along this line in this region where this where this is an open circuit and there's no current flowing um, and basically this part of the circuit's not connected. Vin's not connected to this part, V out's not connected to this part, that diode might as well not be there, it's an open circuit, it's not a short circuit, <laughs> um, no current's flowing. R1, R2, um, vx1 equals uh, potential divider equation VCC is our input VCC multiplied by the voltage uh, the resistor across which we want to measure the voltage which is R2 um, between ground and VX so R2 divided by R1 plus R2 um, so this is a this is an important equation because um, this tells us what this voltage here is going to be during this part of the this part of the the diode um, not conducting phase um, so then at a sudden at a sudden point it starts conducting all of a sudden the voltage across it is um, The voltage across it when the voltage across it becomes the same It's right on this edge here and the voltage across it V D Let's put that D on there to be extra sure. We know what we're talking about um, That's a zero there not an O um, at that point there uh, uh, The the voltage across the diode is zero which must mean that VX equals V out right so if the voltage across that diode is zero, Vx here must equal V out um, at this point here. But below this point, Vx is just doing its thing. It's this, um, and V in um, and V out and V in have their own uh, relationship. We'll get to in a minute. Um, but at the critical point, let's call it a critical point because that's when everything changes. We go from one relationship to another. Um, Vx, and this is Vx1, right? Because we're, we're working in this domain and we get to this point here. So Vx1 um, must, it must equal V out. So let's, uh, let's call that a critical point equals mm, becomes um, uh, is when <laughs> um, v, uh, Vx1 equals V out, or V out, because that's our variable. D equals VX1. Um, so that's important too. So when V out, see, and it's not it's not a relationship. It's not saying that V out is always equal to VX1, but when that happens, this changes. Uh, so let's look at it. Let's go back in time again, and let's look at it in this domain. We were looking at it before. So this isn't conducting. We've got this equation for VX1. We have found a critical point with it. Um, let's just, just ignore that part of the circuit, because remember, this is an open circuit. So this part of the circuit is not doing anything anyway at the moment. V in, R3, V out. Um, we also make some assumptions or we'll be given to, given them in a, in a question. Um, we'll know for the application we're designing this for what the input impedance of V out is. Hopefully it can be infinite. So there's no current flowing through there at all when D, then that diode, let's call it diode D, when that diode D is not conducting. So no currents flowing. V in is a, an input voltage and it's fixed. V out is an output voltage, we don't know what it is, but it's not connected to anything, it's just there. Um, so we've got a resistor, R3, we've got a V in, and we've got a V out. Um, what can we say about that circuit? Well, there's no current flowing, there's no voltage drop across R3. Um, v R3 equals zero volts, therefore V in equals V out. So in this region here, we've got this really nice relationship here. Um, so before the critical point, before the critical point, V in equals V out. Um, so let's, you know, before the critical point, remember that uh, our output voltage was lower than our input voltage. That's this this part here. So the, the, the voltage across the diode was negative. Voltage across the diode was negative. This is the, this is the uh, cathode up here. This is the anode here. When anode is less than the cathode, the um, the voltage drop across there is negative. Um, so that's the voltage drop uh, that way. And when that end is bigger than this end, uh, well, that sorry, that's the wrong way around. That way, when this end is bigger than this end, it's positive. Other way around, it's negative. Anyway, um, yeah, we're in this domain. This wasn't connected. Uh, we're getting up to the point where it was connected. Um, up to the critical point this relationship holds up to that critical point let's make an equ make a so um let's let's just write this like it was an equation right so um v out that's what we want as part of our part of our uh, 
um, analysis of this. What's the uh, relationship between the input voltage and the output voltage? V out equals. Um, let's do this uh, funny brace. I think I've done it wrong. Yeah, I did. Well, <laughs> it's got two big bumps. Anyway, um, so V out um, when um, V out uh, is less than uh, Vx1. Um, we can make it less than or equal to, right? Because this point is in the same place. This is a 0, 0. Um, so we can make it a less than or equal to just to cover that edge case. Uh, it's not a discontinuity. It's They're at the same place on this graph. It doesn't suddenly jump, so we we can we can easily we can easily cover that one. When V out is less than or equal to V X one, um, uh, the V out will be V in. Now for this second case, so for this second case, that diode is conducting, and it's zero ohms. It's connected, so our V out equals V X, right? Our V out equals V X. Um, so otherwise. V out equals Vx. But what is Vx? What is it? Um, well, let's work it out. So we have this V in, which is on this side. This is a short circuit. These are the same thing. We've got this potential divider here. It's not really a potential divider anymore. Um, so diode becomes a short circuit. Let's redraw it. Too far. V O ground V in V C C V plus plus whatever. That's R one, R two, sorry, R R three. That's R two. So now we've got this this in a triangle of resistors we've got two voltage sources we've got one ground and one output um, let's redraw this let's redraw this as though it was uh, uh, I don't know a different form of question or a different module perhaps um, let's put that on there uh, let's put another one on there let's connect this one to a voltage source uh, let's call that one V in let's call this one VCC uh, yeah we need a voltage source then we can call it VCC Let's connect these. These are a ground VCC. This is one node together. And this VCC one, that's R1. This is R3, right? Connected to the V in. And we want another resistor here. And let's call that one R2. Connect those together. Um, and then here is V out. We could go to calling it VO in the middle there. Oh well. V out is across there. So this holds true. Um, for when V out is uh, greater than Vx1. So remember Vx1 is different from Vx. If that Vx1 is a specific case when this diode is open circuit. But here, this diode has become short circuit, so Vx is no longer Vx1. Uh, let's call it Vx2. What's Vx2? Well, this is, this is how we work out Vx2. So we can solve this equation with a variety of methods. We've got nodes there. We could do nodal analysis. We could do loop analysis. We could do Norton Tethernan. Doesn't make much sense for this application. We could uh, we could do superposition. I quite like superposition for this one. It's a nice simple. It's a nice simple circuit, right? And we can replace these with short circuits and then add the two together. Um, so yeah, I should have should have drawn on which way up those voltage sources are, but they're both positive, so it makes everything quite nice. Um, I'll leave this bit as an exercise to the reader, <laughs> um, but that's how a diode, uh, a resistor diode clamp works. Um, these are used for all sorts of things. It can be it can be used for like ESD protection. Um, so we get ESD electrostatic discharge, so a spark jumps to a component. You don't want that component blowing up, so you could put a diode in there connected to some resistors, and that energy would go through the diode and into the resistor and stop that voltage going up very high, because the diode would clamp it, the diode would stop it.
stop it going up it would put its energy through one of these resistors into VCC or ground um, well it would do it into ground um, uh, yeah useful to to limit um, useful to limit uh, voltages as well so we put a voltage say our voltage is sinusoidal and we put that in there um, below a certain threshold let's put a dotted line on there below that threshold it will be fine above that threshold it will be clamped a lot because um, you'll find out if you do the analysis for this um, that that voltage will be less than V in we're not going to get voltage from nowhere right when there's no amplification here um, that voltage will always be less than V in so so a waveform like this the smoothest sine wave I can draw would become something like um, there's a lot less monster anyway uh, If I do a dotted line across here, and do my dotted line across here, you can see it's been clamped, and the tops of those are missing. So you can draw those on and dotted. So that's what they would have looked like before. And there is still a little bit of voltage there. It's just a lot less, so it's limiting its clamping. Um, anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.